Ever since Michael Faraday observed the first semiconductor effect in 1833, the world has evolved with its application. Just 40 years later, we produced the Pioneer Rectifier. Now, semiconductors are used in various applications. They can be found in CPUs and temperature sensors fitted in ACs. Semiconductors are also well used in manufacturing smartphones and common appliances, such as televisions and washing machines. These vast applications have led various countries to set up and develop their semiconductor industries. The leading semiconductor manufacturing countries are Japan, the USA, Taiwan, Germany, South Korea, Britain, Israel, Netherlands, Malaysia, and China. For years, China's semiconductor industry has flourished. In a decade, the sector has thrived and bloomed into one of the largest in the whole world. The country sold semiconductors worth $11.66 billion in January 2023. The semiconductor industry in China has seen a dramatic transition. This development challenges the dominance of established competitors in the market as it aspires to become a technology superpower. In this video, we will look at China's growth with semiconductor chips. Then, we will look at Jensen Huang's concerns about China's rapid expansion with semiconductors. And we will see how the world can manage the speed at which China is developing its semiconductor industry. Before we dive further into this exciting subject, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. As the country attempts to establish itself as a leader in semiconductor technology, its technological aspirations have come to the fore. The aggressive steps taken by the Chinese government to promote the chip industry's expansion have had a long-lasting effect on the world's technical landscape. China desires to create a self-sufficient and competitive semiconductor ecosystem. It has formed strategic programs like Made in China 2025 and the National Integrated Circuit Industry Development Guidelines. Chinese chip makers have evolved from being copycats to formidable industry innovators. By significantly advancing technology, businesses like Huawei's High Silicon and Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC, have challenged the supremacy of long-established industry heavyweights. These businesses have successfully created cutting-edge semiconductor products from sophisticated processors to AI chips. They have boosted the confidence and pride of the Chinese chip sector. The success of China's chip sector can also be ascribed to the country's significant spending on research and education. Recognizing talent's crucial role in fostering innovation, China has concentrated on luring and encouraging top-tier experts in semiconductor technology. Reputable academic institutions like Tsinghua University and the Chinese Academy of Sciences have established top-notch research facilities and partnerships with business titans. Together, they have created an environment conducive to groundbreaking discoveries and technological developments. The spectacular growth of China's chip sector has been attributed to the nation's technological aspirations. The shift from imitation to invention and significant investments in education and research have also played a major role in this development. Concerns voiced by the CEO of NVIDIA must be taken seriously as Chinese firms become significant players in the global semiconductor market. We must also consider potential solutions to the problems presented by China's takeover of the chip business. In the battle to develop AI technology, NVIDIA has established itself as the leading provider of chips. They are used to train sophisticated large language models that power chatbots like OpenAI's ChatGPT. Before its most recent earnings report was released, NVIDIA's market capitalization had more than doubled this year due to the increased interest in AI. This price now exceeds that of its U.S. competitors, such as Qualcomm and Intel, each valued at over $120 billion. NVIDIA continues to command a significant market share advantage over Taiwanese chipmaker TSMC, valued at over $450 billion. NVIDIA, a California-based corporation, 
has encountered challenges selling its cutting-edge chips, notably the H100 and A100 series, to Chinese customers. These obstacles arose since the U.S. imposed export limitations on AI technology in August. As a result, NVIDIA was forced to alter specific chip designs to comply with U.S. laws restricting the functionality of goods sold in China. NVIDIA's CEO, Mr. Huang, estimates that China makes up around one-third of the global market for U.S. tech products. He underlined that China is significant because it is a crucial supplier of components and a demand for NVIDIA's goods. According to the executive, that relevance cannot be easily replaced. In an interview with the Financial Times, Jensen Huang claimed that the export restrictions had severely restricted the Silicon Valley organization. The Biden administration put them in place to obstruct Chinese semiconductor manufacturing. Huang lamented that the company now has its metaphorical hands tied behind its back. Due to these efforts, he added that NVIDIA cannot sell advanced chips in one of its biggest markets. He also stated that Chinese firms have started working on their chips. These chips would take on NVIDIA's leading processors in the gaming, graphics, and artificial intelligence industries. China has established itself as the most assertive front in a new Cold War between the two powerful countries. To prevent China from acquiring or producing cutting-edge semiconductors, the United States has intensified its efforts. Mr. Huang made a warning statement just days before Chinese officials banned U.S. memory chip maker Micron's products from vital infrastructure. The Taiwanese-American businessman advised U.S. politicians to exercise caution while considering enacting new regulations limiting trade with China. This action by the Chinese government was considered the first substantial act of retaliation against Washington's export restrictions. Mr. Huang warned that the Biden administration's $79 billion funding package, known as the CHIPS Act, would be severely hampered if access to China were blocked. The act is intended to encourage the development of more semiconductor manufacturing plants, FABs, within the United States, he warned that the U.S. tech industry would suffer severe setbacks. Jensen Huang claimed that the demand for American fabs would decline significantly if the Chinese market became inaccessible. This occurrence would result in a 30% fall in demand from the American tech industry. As a result, there would be an abundance of fabs, which would overwhelm the market. Mr. Huang underlined the significance of careful regulation to prevent adverse effects on the tech sector. Lack of compliance with such rules would cause harm rather than give the intended help. Beijing claims Taiwan is part of its territory, where most cutting-edge chips, including NVIDIA products, are made. President Biden has stated that the U.S. is ready to step in if China launches unjustified military operations against Taiwan. A conflict of this magnitude might cause massive global interruptions in manufacturing various items, from computers to cars. NVIDIA's most recent fiscal year was concluded in January 2023. The company reported that China, including Hong Kong, provided more than a fifth of its sales. Additionally, Taiwan was responsible for almost 25% of NVIDIA's sales during the same period. The billing location of NVIDIA's customers, encompassing contracted producers that then sell to end customers in various markets, is reflected in these numbers. Any regional disputes could disrupt over $12 billion of NVIDIA's yearly profits, or roughly half of its total. As he thought about regulatory obstacles, Mr. Huang voiced his severe displeasure about the unsuccessful acquisition of ARM. The microprocessor company has its headquarters in the UK. He expressed the emotional effect by saying that the result had deeply hurt him. Additionally, he noted that making investments in the UK was no longer manageable. Huang underlined the growing complexity and difficulties his company faced. Jensen Huang's caution is supported by his worries about intellectual property rights and technological transfer. He draws attention to the dangers encountered by foreign businesses doing business in China's semiconductor industry. Red flags have been raised by coerced technology transfers and intellectual property theft. These indicate that international firms may need to give up their proprietary innovations to access China's sizable market. These worries have wide-ranging ramifications. 
Foreign businesses may become less innovative and less competitive if they continue to have trouble securing their intellectual property. Furthermore, it might cause people to lose faith in one another and be reluctant to work together. If this were to happen, it would limit the potential for technical development on a global scale. The effects of China's conquest of the chip industry go beyond the realms of technology and commerce. The fact that semiconductors are essential components in many industries, including defense, raises national security issues. The CEO's warning highlights the necessity of giving considerable attention to the potential risks connected to China's growing influence in the chip business. It is crucial to strike a delicate balance between promoting innovation and defending security interests to overcome these difficulties. Also, it is necessary to create regulatory frameworks to safeguard intellectual property rights and stop unethical business practices. By doing so, there would be a level playing field for all participants in the chip sector. Additionally, essential is global cooperation. Global stakeholders can cooperate to create innovation while solving common concerns by encouraging collaboration, open communication, and collaborative research endeavors. Such cooperation may promote trust and knowledge sharing. Furthermore, it could ensure that the development of China's chip sector complies with international norms and best practices. Thank you for staying tuned. If you enjoyed this thought-provoking video, kindly subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment below.